Hello and welcome to Omron's Cryptic video series. In this video we're going to show you how to join an NJ SQL to a Microsoft SQL Server. The first thing you need to know is that the NJ itself, only certain models are SQL, SQL Server compliant. That's the ones that end in 20. Right now that would be the NJ5 and the NJ1 series and hopefully eventually the NX7 series. The next thing you need to know is there are some error message logging capability with this controller. Uh, the first two are usually turned on, so that's not a big deal. But the third one, please turn it on. Turn it on and record. And I usually change the files to a couple of files because who wants to look through 50 files of 10 megabytes of error messages? Um, then what happens is you go to this screen, sorry, this part here, you add a connection. On the NJ1, that would be one connection. On the NJ5, it can be up to three. Then you go here and you'll rename it. The name's important because you'll use it in your ladder program, and it's nice if you know what it's referring to. Then what you do is you go here. Now, Microsoft SQL is actually this selection. There's also Oracle, IBM DB2, MySQL, Firebird, and there's one more now. The next thing is you have to tell the NJ SQL where the SQL server is, either by IP address or by host name. If you use host name, don't forget to go back to the Ethernet port, turn on the DNS server, and of course tell it where the DNS server is. Then you need to uh, type in a port number. I've used the default port number. Typically if you're using default, you don't have to put it in, can be omitted. Um, then there's a database name. Now what that's referring to is this right here, the database you created. Not the server name, the database. And there's mul there can be multiple databases in that server. The next thing is your username. I of course created one called NJ with a password and I was doing that because I was playing with uh, rights. What you can do is individual users can be restricted to what databases they can get at, which is kind of neat. And that's why sometimes a database name can be omitted because you restricted that user to that database and made it the default path. Now, once you've got all that done, you can test it. You go online. Sorry, you would have went project, you know, rebuild, then sync which I'm not going to do, and then you can test. Now, in this case, it worked because I'm prepared. <laughs> but it doesn't always work out that way. So a couple of things can go wrong. The first one is Windows Firewall can stop your SQL Server functioning. So you may want to turn it off, which would be done right here. Now, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. You leave, turned up, it, leave it turned off, but for connecting it just to the Omron NJ and testing that this is a problem, yes, I would turn it off. If you find that's the problem, you can program the firewall to let the SQL Server through. The next thing that can go wrong is here. First of all, it's a wired port. Make sure you configured your wired port to the same IP address that you programmed here. The next thing that goes wrong is when you first turn on your SQL Server, it goes, at least if you configure it the way I'm going to show you to configure it, it'll go to the top port. And in this case, it's a USB port. So it won't work. So I disable, I go offline, I go here, I pull the USB cable, and now my wired port is the top port. Now, what happens is here, sorry, here, this of course should have been running. You don't need any of the others. And then you go to Network Configuration Protocol for SQL Express, our server. TCP, you want it enabled, yes. And I leave all these top ones empty, no. And I go straight to the bottom one. There'll be a number here, backspace, get rid of it, and then type 1433 down here. Because I configure it this way is why uh, the software keeps going after the top port. 
you, if you had a program that up here to the correct port, it wouldn't do that. Um, being a laptop that I'm continuously fiddling with, I don't do that. Um, after you've set this, you must go back here, stop and restart it. And that'll make it bind to the proper port. After I made it bind to the proper port, I can plug my USB cable back in so I can talk to my PLC. It'll show up. Notice also if I turn on the wireless, the wireless will also pop up. So the wireless, the note is, the wireless must also be off. And there goes my USB port. Now, after I've bound to the port, it's not a problem. I don't care what order these show up in. And then I can test again, and it will work.